just so everybody's on the same page, this is TLS interim for uh, April 2021. Uh, here's the note well, which is kind of uh, standard for all IETF meetings. Um, and today we're discussing uh, ECH. Is there anybody who'd be willing to take some notes in Code EMD? I can. Can you uh, post the link? I did put one in the chat, but let me repost it in case it's... Uh... Oh, I see it. I see it. I see the chat now. Yeah, I think the, what have, the history is not always available to everyone. I'll paste it again so people can see. All right. Um, so, Chris, do you, Chris uh, Wood, do you want to take us away to uh, start issues? in with the issues? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, in the in the GoDMD, uh page, I put um, a, a sorted list of issues I think we should that would be good to go through um, and discuss. Um, there are a couple other, like um, as you may have seen on the list, there there are some small um, PRs that uh, went up that are not really contentious or shouldn't be contentious. So I I think we can keep the discussion of those sort of on the list um, and hopefully resolve them and merge them uh, soon. Um, but the list in the uh, the notes page, I think, are sort of the, the big ticket items. Um, if possible, I'd like to, because we only have an hour, I believe, um, I would like to leave uh, half of the meeting to talk about HR. I expect that to be um, uh, how we spend most of the time, uh, or that to be sort of the most contentious uh, issue here. Um, the other ones less so, uh, but who knows? Uh, this thing, these things always go uh, in various ways. So. Um, do, I don't know if people have the, the page open, but if, um, if you do, um, and you'd like, a I guess a change in, or a, a different sorted order of issues, um, I guess just speak up and perhaps we can shuffle things around. Okay. Um, I guess you're nothing. Why don't we just uh, pop open the first issue? Um, so all right. Uh, let me know if this looks okay. If I need to make anything different size, it looks good for my view. Um, I, I assume the same for everyone else, but okay. Um, so yeah, Stephen uh, filed this issue. He is here. Um, uh, talking about how the the current uh, use of HPE does not allow use of a single shot uh, API, um, which is one of the I guess nicer features of HPE. Um, uh, there are various reasons for uh, why this was done. Um, David, I think summarized it quite nicely in the last comment um, on this issue. So if you scroll down, um, uh, oh geez. Um, so what, can, what, Chris, can I suggest something? Sure, go ahead. I mean, I think if, if HRR stays anywhere like it is, this definitely gets closed. Uh, if HRR turns into something that allows a single shot API, we could revisit this. So maybe just leave this one open until that's clear, which is probably a more important thing anyway. Um, that seems like a reasonable proposal. Um, I don't know. I, I guess David, since you've been engaged on the thread, do you want to do you want to say anything about this particular issue? Uh, sorry, my unmuted. Uh, I seems reasonable to me. I, I mean, I think like you know, all of these decisions are like secretly are like subtly linked to each other. Um, I think like given the current state of the world or things remotely close to the current state of the world, this is the right formulation. Um, maybe we'll completely change it. I don't know. <laughs> Um, okay, yeah, I guess let's just uh, let's just defer it then, park it until we uh, resolve the HR issue. Easy peasy. Um, right, the next one. Um, Steve, I'll just turn this over to you, um, if that's okay. 
Uh, so this is the compression. Yeah, okay. So people, I, I seem to be in the rough here. Uh, I still think it's a mad, terrible idea. But if I'm in the rough, I'm in the rough. But uh, and and I I was working on my draft ten code today, and I had an off by one count error in the reconstruction of the inner ch because of this. Uh, so I think we'll hit people. But if I'm in the rough, I'm in the rough. Right. So the, the, I guess the, 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 the key, uh, well, I, I don't want to speak for you, Stephen, but it seems like the, the, the key point is that the thing is overly general, perhaps overly general right now, um, and complicated to implement, um, and given that we might not need to compress everything and maybe only need to compress key shares. Why don't we do just that? Um, or, or do nothing, I, I guess is another option. Um, uh, I see Ben's in the queue, so I'll, I'll let him uh, speak. Hey, uh, I guess I'd like to try to distinguish a little bit between whether we want to develop the feature now uh, and how it actually is spelled. Um, in terms of spelling, I can see some variations that might make people a little happier. Like, for example, uh, I think that it would be reasonable to say that the, the client hello inner just copies everything in the outer client hello by default. And then if you want to overwrite uh, extensions, there's a you know a way to add add or replace extensions um, and possibly also then a way to remove them. But if you just do nothing, then the inner and outer are the same, which is usually what you want. Uh, that so that that's sort of but that's just a really uh, a wire formatting question. Um, and another possibility to split the difference here would be to declare this as an extension, an ECH extension, and and do it and still do it now, but but do it as an extension. Um, it is already an extension, um, unless I'm misunderstanding what you're saying, um, uh, Chris. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, this is something that it's up to the client if they want to implement it or not. Um, the server always has to implement it, but my implementation experience is that the server side is fairly straightforward. Um, it always does the same thing no matter what. The complexity really here is on the client side, so it's up to the client to decide you know, how much complexity it wants to eat. Um, but yeah, uh, that, yeah, that's all I was going to say. Um, Christian asks, asks the question, um, why do we want to specify this before the implementation experience? I just reply that um, we do have implementation experience. Um, I believe uh, NSS and Boring SSL and uh, the Cloudflare Go stack have all implemented this, as has Stephen in this particular case. Um, so, right. Um, so I'd like to hear from other people who have implemented it in terms of what they want to do. Um, maybe David or uh, Martin can uh, chime in. So uh, I, had some, Go ahead. I, I had some interesting bugs when I was trying to trying to deal with this myself. I, I have some sympathy for Stephen's position here, but uh, that said, it is just straightforward programming, so it's not really um, that much of a burden in the end. I, I could go either way on this one. Um, okay, so I, I guess. Um... From, from my perspective, uh, we, we, the design has been iterated on quite a lot. Um, uh, it feels like it seems like as though it would fit any future use cases that we might need. Um, it's been implemented. Um, so I, I, I think this is just one of the things we need to kind of pin down now. Um, and, and, and maybe if we want to revisit later in the future, do so. But I'd really like to just kind of to get resolution on this now. So. Um, is there any way we can do sort of like there's not a lot enough people in the room to sort of do a representative um, um or anything, but I, I I think like we we should do something to avoid circling on this particular issue, um, and uh, yeah, um, oh sorry, Stephen. <laughs> yeah, I, I was gonna suggest, but I, you know, I I think I know a bunch of people have expressed opinions on the list, so I I think we could regard me as more or less in the rough, and just live with the horror for now, anyway. So I, I I'd say this is one that that the chairs could kind of declare. It's reasonably clear that I'm in the rough. 
Um, Joe, Sean? Let's see if my earbud is working. Um, if that's the case, then let's go ahead and do that. Let's just say that we're going to go ahead and close this one and uh, declare Stephen the ref. Stephen, this might be also be good because um, we're keeping open the, the complexity issue uh, basically until we ship this thing. It might be good to note, like, port some of this over uh, to that particular issue just so, like, we don't lose track of it. Um, I mean, among the other things that are complicated to implement, this is one of them. So if we're if we're going to like do a comb over the, the spec to see and uh, how we might simplify things in the future, um, might as well include this. Yeah, that's fair enough. I, I think the main thing is the you know the the main complexity it brings is there's no kind of sane API that you can offer a generic application client that I can see, but I, I could take an action to to try and I guess write a comment in the other issue. On complexity about that. Yeah. And like Twitter PR later. Yeah, that sounds good. Um and, and David left a comment in chat, which I think uh is perfectly reasonable, which is like keep what we have for now, close this out, keep what we have for now. If if something simpler comes along later during the course of this uh, complexity investigation, by by all means we should adopt the simpler thing. Um uh, okay, cool. Let's uh let's move on to the next one. Um Right, uh, Stephen, do you want me to speak to this, or do you want to summarize? Go right ahead. You're better at this than I am. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, okay, so uh, basically, the, the 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 current accepting signal is like as conservative as we could possibly be, um, given all of the different uh, interesting active do not stick out attacks that uh, it were brought up on the list in the course of like trying to figure out how to avoid trial decryption way back when. Um, and by conservative, I mean it, it goes through the actual key derivation step for the handshake secret and then derives a, a signal, um, an acceptance signal from that. Um, it's been pointed out that this is um, somewhat uh, problematic and circular in that, like, uh, you might have to process the key share extensions more than once, which is kind of annoying. Um, and there's a potential relaxation, which one might do, wherein um, rather than like actually going through the key derivation step twice. Uh, you simply derive the secret from the, the uh, or the signal from the supposedly secret uh, client hello inner and the um, uh, the server hello that would be used as the transcript during the, the handshake secret derivation. Um, uh, and this seems like a, a, a perfectly sort of reasonable um, approach. Um, uh, but to just to kind of throw my uh, opinion into the room, um, I think, given the uh, the the problems we've had with you know lack of binding and um, uh, just odd active attacks that seem to creep up uh, while or over the course of this you know the development of this particular protocol, I'd be inclined to just kind of park this one um, until we get a, a you know a, a grasp of the protocol and its uh, formal like effectively have a formal analysis of and we can convince ourselves that like you know, relaxing the, the signal computation from what we have now to Davis proposal um, is safe to do so. Um, uh, and I guess uh, Martin's in the queue, um, but that's the gist and that's my proposal. Yeah, so I was gonna say a similar thing, um, but more to the, more toward the uh, keep it as it is side of things. I realize that this is a stumble that uh, potentially exists because you do need this, but if you don't have different key shares in the inner and outer, this is not a problem. So our, our implementation just goes ahead and and uses the the singular key share that we have to derive the secrets before even really deciding whether whether to do ECH or not, and that works out perfectly fine. Yeah. Um... There is a, an, a sort of dependency on the HR thing here. Um, uh, so like parking it also while we resolve that HR issue, um, and it just further makes sense to me. Um, I don't know if David wanted to say something to that effect. That's mostly what I want to say, but I do want to footnote Martin's co comment on the key share that you do need to rewind back on the PSK or not necessarily rewind. There's some like weird interaction with the PSK because the PSK is inserted into the key schedule before you decide whether or not you accepted things, but it's only sent in the inner client hello. So you sort of have to like 
double check after the fact if the server hello was actually invalid when you like decide, which is mildly weird. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say that I'm not really very confident in my understanding of how uh, PSKs and ACH work together. And so um, it might be that we have bugs in our code, but uh, I don't know. Didn't come up. Um, all right, so uh, I think there's enough uh, motivation to kind of just park this, um, uh, uh, park this until we have the HR issue resolved now, until we have um, formal analysis uh, convincing ourselves that this is this is safe. Um, so hearing no objections, I think we can just move forward. Right. Um, so uh, th this is a particularly interesting pull request um, that's received a lot of discussion. Um, uh, is, is Dan in the room uh, by chance? Yes, he is. Uh, Dan, do you want to speak to this or would you like me to do so? Uh, sorry, let me pull this up. Um, yeah, so this is, this is, this is about the issue raised in number 405 that, uh, David wrote up. Um, the issue is that, uh, stuff from the DNS can find its way into the server name extension right now on the client hello outer. Um, and we're talking about clamping down on the values that can go in there. David, David raised like a SQL injection stirring example. Um, and so the question on this is. Do we want to restrict it to host names only? Do we want to also allow IP addresses? Um, if we want to allow host names only, uh, do we want to exclude IP addresses, like IPv4 addresses that, that kind of look like a, a dotted host name representation? So I, I think, um, the, the... And David, I, I think uh, you could probably summarize this much better than I can. But from my perspective, there seems to be like two things floating around here. The first of which is like what actually goes in the um, the public name field in the at config, um, and how is how are clients or stacks supposed to validate that before actually consuming it? And the second of which is um, how they construct um, a client hello using that information um, to connect to uh, the the, the, the client facing server. Um, uh, this sort of ties into Another issue, um, which is the next one in the list uh, that Stephen filed, which is like, should the client be forced to put something in the server name field or not? Um, uh, you could imagine if uh, IP addresses are permitted uh, for the, you know, the the, the client facing servers rejection um, certificate, uh, that like certainly like you don't put IP addresses in the server name field, so so nothing would go there. So we need we would need to like rework that language a little bit. Um, but I, I think it might be useful to to separate these two concepts. Um, that is, you know, what actually goes in this particular blob, and then how you construct a client holo using this blob. Um, uh, so given that, I guess Ben is in the queue. Yeah, Ben. Hey, Ben Schwartz. Uh, so it seems like this question would be a lot easier if we were willing to spend one byte and and go back to having the specified public name be a server name as used in SNI, you know, the RFC 6066 server name. Uh, so it's just one byte and then something. And the one byte, if it's a zero, it's DNS. Otherwise, maybe it could be something else if we ever want to extend that. You know, I think we're, we're finding that we need, you know, we're worried here that we might need more extensibility. So. Maybe we should just go back to the more extensible version. Uh, Martin? So um, I think the only thing that we're really concerned with here is the distinction between DNS names and IP addresses. And um, for that, I don't think spending the extra byte is really necessary. They're, they're readily distinguishable, aside from the fact that um, uh, an IPv4 address in dotted decimal is actually a valid um, LDH 
name. But um, aside from that, um, we routinely distinguish between the two of them. Um, I, I guess the, the real question for me is um, what the expectations the, the client is given with respect to the two things. And I'm actually really quite happy with the idea that that Dan sort of suggested, which is that the, the name that's in that field is the name that you use to validate the certificate or the identity rather that you use to uh, validate the certificate that, that the server offers in a fallback scenario. And that you would include a DNS name in the, the client hello if, if it was in fact a DNS name. Yeah, I think that's sort of the, the, the most ergonomic uh, a way to, to to resolve these two issues, and that is just reframe this as the, the name you use to verify the fallback uh, certificate um, or the identity that you use to verify the fallback fallback certificate. And that could be IP address if it's an IP, if the server uses an IP cert, uh, or it could be a name, um, but definitely not drop tables. So I, I I guess as part of that, we would just have to verify, like specify like how clients verify you know the the actual contents. Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm less uh, enthusiastic about uh, enthusiastic about being uh, entirely rigorous about validating the contents of this. Um, I think we can probably get away with something fairly minimal. Yeah, I, I don't feel strongly about the language. It's just like, yeah, yeah. Provided that provided that that's the concept, I guess that we want to, uh, you know, or that that's the the sort of composition that we want to achieve here. I, I, I'd be okay with, um, I'd be okay with. You know something that's simple, uh, Stephen. Yeah, just just want to check. I understand what you said there, Chris. Which sounded okay to me. Uh, so, so basically, what we're saying is that the the public name should be a name, a name that you can use to verify the fallback cert, and what the client puts in the outer SNI should similarly be such a thing. And if that's what you said, I agree with it. And the consequence, I think, is that you know many servers and many certs cover many names. So we're not being we're not you know having a strict you must put the exact string from public name in ECH into outer SNI. So I, I think um, rather than being I guess specific in terms of you must should whatever what what that actually goes in the SNI, I, I think the, the the suggestion that I'm trying to make is that we just sort of rewrite this text so it talks more about how you construct an outer client hello. Um, given an identity that you would use to verify, uh, you know, the expected fallback name, um, and you know, stacks are free to construct that client hello accordingly, um, uh, or, or what have you. Uh, I, I don't know if that distinction is clear. Um, but that sounds fine to me. What you said. So. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, I, I guess Ben is next in the queue. Yeah. So, I just don't like the idea of trying to parse this one string in these different ways. And if we really, so if we, if what we really mean is this is the identity that you are supposed to use in order to, in order to parse a, in order to validate the certificate that comes back, then it should probably be something like an X509 uh, subject or like an X509 uh, common name or something. Uh, so, but it, regardless of of exactly how it's formatted, I think it needs it needs uh, an indirection byte. It needs a type byte if we're going to try to cram in multiple things here. Otherwise, we're going to end up with something where we're saying, "Oh, this is the identity that you used to validate the certificate." But actually, only domain names and IP addresses are acceptable identities, and and other kinds of identities that do exist in the world are like non-expressible or maybe expressible but only if you can somehow distinguish them by parsing so um before turning it over to david my my uh impression for the resolution of this would be that yeah it's um the, oh, the only permitted identities are names and ip addresses um uh oh david's out of the queue now okay um I, 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 I mean, don't really know. Like in, in the in the case for um, authenticating in the fallback server, I'm not sure if any other sort of identity makes sense, but uh, maybe there are some. I just I don't know what they are. Uh, 
anyways, um, uh, so I, 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 I think perhaps um, a good way forward for this issue and then the next one in the list um, would be to sort of uh, re rejiggle this text a little bit um, so that it focuses on the, this being an identity um, and then uh, to resolve uh, issue uh, 396, which is the must versus should go in the server name, um, rewrite that text so it's more about how you construct the client hello outer based on the identity um, rather than try to be very crisp or, or rigid in terms of like what must and must not go with the server name. I think that would resolve uh, the two issues. Um, quite nicely. Okay, great. Um, let's, I guess let's, let's sound that. Good. <laughs> All that right. Sounds, uh, that sounds good. As chair sounds good. <laughs> lovely. Um, uh, so we'll work on PRs for those two things and then close them out shortly. All right. Um, so the last big one, um, which uh, should take up the rest of the meeting, um, is HRR. Um, so uh, I, I don't know who wants to speak to this first. There, there's obviously a lot to consider in this particular proposal in terms of, uh, you know, client side server side complexity. Um, you know, whether or not uh, uh, you want like RFC A four four six compliance or and, and you know slew of other things. Um, I think. Uh, either Chris or David, um, you've obviously thought a great deal about this. So um, would one of you like to sort of summarize um, perhaps how we got here and, and what this what this particular proposal is about? Mind taking it, David? Sure. Um, man, there's like a lot of things going on here. Uh, let me go try to find the list of issues that you had written up, Chris. Uh, it's in that last email that uh, the thread that Martin started. Yeah. So hello retry request is a giant disaster, but it is also a thing that exists. So we are kind of stuck with it. Um, we have a few issues all floating around here. Um, uh, so the first is uh, that uh, it is ambiguous, so you can't tell whether the hello retry request in the current draft applies to both the inner and the outer client hello, um, which means that now we need to worry about what happens if it is if you can construct one that a, a, a hello retry request that applies to one but not the other. We have attempted to patch around this in the draft right now by writing text that implies thou shalt not pick differences in the two that would make the two that would change your hello retry request acceptance criteria. I don't think we were very successful at this, and my sense from a previous working group meeting was that we like agreed that this was a band aid, and but there wasn't consensus to do this as the long term solution. Maybe that's since changed. I don't know. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, split. So uh, Eck has the split mode thing. We've got this client facing server and the back end server who might not necessarily know a whole lot about each other. Um, and uh, if the split mode server wishes to send a cookie on ek accept because it's doing stateless HRR, there is no way for it to do this because by the time it's construct because by the time it's gotten the hello retry request to forward, the backend server has already filled in the cookie. So we would need to either declare that we do not want to solve this problem or do something. Um, let's see. Uh, there's this compatibility slash RFC A446 compliance nuisance where we put very strict rules in hello retry requests that unprompted you cannot change uh, an extension uh, in the second client hello, which means that we are not allowed to re-encrypt the second client hello unless we stick a hello retry request extension, sorry, a, an ek extension inside hello retry request, unless we go and uh, update that rule, which probably needs to happen in RFC A four four six biz. Uh, that has some extra wriggles because uh, at least one TLS implementation, Libre SSL, enforces this rule. The the A four four six text applies just to the client, and it's sort of ambiguous what you do on the server. Uh, but some servers have decided uh, it checked. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Um, so we have band-aided over the compatibility issue for now by introducing a difference in the grease and non-grease behavior. Uh, this 
works, but we still have the 8446 violation that we would need to do something about. Um, and uh, words. Um, uh, it also makes it, it introduces a way to distinguish between uh, Greece and non Greece by forging. And this, I think Ben Schwartz came up with this. You can uh, just forge a hello retry request. And even if the server wasn't going to do hello retry request, you can see if the client would have switched it. Um, I think that may be most of them. Um, and so this proposal was a like, well, given we've got all of these problems, let's see what, what it would look like to try to like do the other thing. And uh, yeah, it is a bit of a headache, unfortunately, but it does dispatch all of these problems. Um, yeah, and I guess now is here where we where we debate complexity and motivations and problem and, and like which problems are and aren't worth solving, but it seemed worth putting it on the table. All right, who would like to start? Martin, do you want to speak? Yeah, I'll start out. Um, so let's see. Um, I, I, first of all, I just realized in David's summary there that I sort of misunderstood the, the framing of the, the cookie problem. Uh, I hadn't realized that there was potentially um, two cookies that different servers wanted to provide. Uh, just from my perspective, I think I'm happy to let that one just uh, be solved by the two servers collaborating more more fully when it comes to um, dealing with the split mode and, and HRR. Um, that is probably easier in the case where you want to have split mode with the front doing a stateless, but also being able to, to in the case of a stateless, send the um, forward the inner client hello to the back end. It seems like a, a pretty narrow sort of use case to worry about. Um, but I think probably the thing that I realized once I went through all of this was that the the um, the requirements that we have are completely simple. When you look at the implementation, if you assume that the client is sending the same thing for those, uh, for inner and outer, for those things that actually matter, which is not a lot of things. Um, as I pointed out in, the, in my email, there's really only one thing that changes between the, the first and the second one, and that's the, the choice of which groups you provide key shares for. Uh, and if you just look at that particular problem, it's not that difficult to solve uh, if you have shares for the same groups in inner and outer, which is probably what people are going to do anyway. So I don't think that there's anything um, particularly onerous on, in terms of client side for, for dealing with uh, a, a model where the HRR applies to both. Um, uh, what other things were there? Oh yeah, the, the whole morass of problems around uh, hello retry request in, in the core spec uh, seem to be fixed by David's proposal to, to say that uh, extensions have their own rules for how they might change in response to a hello retry request, even if they aren't present in it. And that's fine. I, un I recognize the compatibility problems, but I think that's something that we can, we can work through. As I pointed out in my email, there's not really any concern with actually deploying ECH if we allow for the, the grease to stay the same. I also don't care about the, 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 uh, the verification attack with a spoofed HRR. I think that's just something that we've already accepted. Um, uh, what else was there? Uh, I don't think we need an acceptance signal in HRR random or in HRR period, because if they're the same, then that's that's fine. Um, I think that's, that's all I really had. Um, I'll let others argue for the complexity. I, for me, the complexity is unacceptable. Uh, David, go ahead. So the matching rule is a bit more complicated than uh, what you write. It, it's still like uh, it's still something that like yeah I agree that most of the time you should do it anyway. Um, but you need it's not 
anything that can change in response to HRR. It's anything that will change which HRRs you accept. And so the Cypher suites need to match as well. And also, sorry, the TLS 1.3 up subset of the Cypher suites must match as, and also the TLS 1.3 up subset of the versions must match. Um, and also we need to come up with like words that capture any future uh, extensions we may add. I think you pointed out in your email that there was this uh, password salt extension, which I also need to go and dig into more. Um, but at a glance, it seems like something where you might not actually want it in the outer client hello, given that like it's it seems to be about authenticating some client identity with a password and you wouldn't want to present the client identity for the outer client hello. But I also haven't looked at it, so I could just be in totally off on that. Um, so that was like the, the, the like I, if we can come up with a way to say the matching rule, like I, I, I mean that is what we originally suggested doing. Um, it didn't particularly work the first time. I think I think you actually were one of the people who had were, uh, uh, had we had a long thread with on the comment uh, on the on the PR, and I think we didn't end up on the same page. And the draft actually right now has some self-contradictory information because we didn't get the criteria right. Uh, Steven, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I guess, I, I, first of all, I'm sorry if I pissed off anybody or, or, or implied anybody had bad motivation in my mail for the list. Uh, it wasn't the intent. And I've, I've made these mistakes myself a lot. I, I just wonder, would we be better off looking to see, can we get rid of some of the case? I, I, the current PR, I think, attempts to kind of solve all the cases via HRR, and that creates a bunch of complexity. I wonder, would we be better to just accept that some of the, a bunch of these cases, maybe not all of them, but a bunch of them, are just failures, and we, re, you know, we require you to not do something that that shoot yourself in the foot. And if you choose to, you know, have a, a split mode backend server that only supports brain pool or something, it's likely just not going to work for you. I, 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 I think if we can get rid of some of those, some of the combinatorics here, it might become simple enough to do. And I don't think we're there yet. Martin? Let's back around to me again. Um, yeah, I, I like this idea that we might just eliminate some of the, um, the, the really curly corner cases. As far as I can see, however, there's a, only that, uh, that double cookie case that that David pointed out earlier that's really problematic in terms of that. Um, my analysis of the inner outer um, constraints that we would have to apply is simply that the client has the same preferences for anything that might uh, govern what the handshake keys might ultimately be, which is the only sorts of things that HRR can actually change anyway. And so um, that's pretty simple. You keep the same set of Cypher suites that you advertise in the inner and outer, and that's probably OK. It's not really that much of a secret. Um, sort of suggests maybe that we don't need to encode the um, Cypher suite list in the inner, but let's not go there. Um, uh, and that way you don't have a have any problem, potential for problems in terms of what the, the server, whichever one it happens to be, chooses in hello retry request. And um, David's point uh, about that, um, my response to that was, um, if you have something different in the inner, it's going to be very visible that that different, in some cases anyway, it's going to be very visible that that difference exists depending on which one of the two client hellos is ultimately accepted. So I, I think that probably we ultimately want the, the same uh, configuration for versions, groups, uh, Cypher suites, and signature, it's not signature algorithm, it's PSKs, I think it was the other one, uh, in, in it, both inner and outer. It solves the problem, I think. Edgar? Yeah, so I'm still trying to figure out what I think, but I have a few maybe preliminary questions that may, may, may be, go to either Martin or David Benner both, um, but also I have a, so I want to say for that, um, there are two kinds of complexity here, um, or at least two, maybe three. There's implementation complexity, there's protocol complexity, and there's analysis complexity. And what I see the 
I mean, the, the original decision to go to CHN or CH adder was an attempt to remove an analysis complexity, namely that every time um, that every time we try to like like only cut pieces of pieces of it and stuff them in and, and, and encrypt the envelope, we like ran into analytic problems. And so from an analytic perspective, it seems like encrypting the, the HRR is also the, is also uh, just the same kind of take. Um, people may recall that at one point, um, uh, I think it was uh, Deb Cooley suggested just tunneling, like just doing TLS inside of TLS. Um, and at some level, that's that, that's what that's what it would be if you just did, you know, um, if, if you if you just did uh, uh, encrypted client hello and then and then uh, encrypted HRR. Um, uh, the um, uh, it would be helpful to me. Um, I see this list of um, issues in GitHub, but it'd be helpful to me if we had a document, which I'd be happy to collaborate preparing, which had like a succinct description of each of the problems with, the cur with like the current pre-PR design um, uh, uh, so that we could like actually think about them independently perhaps. Um, and finally, um, uh, oh, sorry, two more things. Um, I'm still not quite following the, the double cookie issue, um, so maybe someone could walk me through it. And also, what happens in the case um, where uh, that Martin indicated, where you say, "Well, they have to be, you have to have the same things in the inner and outer." What happens if you don't? Now I'm done. I know it was very long. Uh, Chris, I just wanted to suggest if it's possible. You know, we're kind of responding to like three different things the last person said about three different points. I think it might be helpful to kind of narrow on one thing. Um, and in that spirit, I'm just going to respond to one thing. Um, I so the uh, Martin Thompson's uh, suggestion, like the rule should just be that the inner and outer preferences have to be the same. I think that's a very difficult thing to enforce uh, in the future because um, because future extensions are going to act, uh, uh, interact with ECH in ways we can't really predict right now. And I think that um, the, the, the main reason I like the Hello Retra HRR inner and outer is that um, it sort of, it sort of future proves things. Um, it, 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 it makes it, see, it I, I think it's going to make it ultimately simpler to compose ECH with future extensions. Um, so future composability is, is something I'm concerned about, um, and that's it. So I don't think anyone else is left in the queue. Um, oh, Ben, go ahead. Hi. Uh, I just want to point out that uh, while while we can reasonably request that the or demand that the client use the same key share uh, groups in the inner and outer, for example. I think it's actually much more difficult to demand that the that the client facing server, that, that the fallback and the back end servers support the same set of cipher suites. Because server configurations need to be able to change over time. So if you're a, a front end server, um, you need to be able to add new cipher suites. And at that point, you've created a mismatch with the backend. David, go ahead. So I don't think the front end and back end server need to share configuration. Um, I mean, if they don't share configuration, they're, you're, you're going to have few, smaller um, anonymity sets than you actually think you do. Uh, but I don't think it breaks this property. Um, uh, I was going to suggest that um, the that uh, so I agree that the, the so so it seems that like the the main like the the double cookie thing I think I agree with Martin that like you know if we if we decide we don't want to do it we cannot do it uh, I I filed the issue in like October and like there wasn't a like consensus not to do it and so we were like oh this is like a thousand paper cuts let's see what happens if we try to fix it um, I think probably the main the the main source the the main question is around this like how do we write down how do we and do we try writing down the um, client hello matching rules? Um, and so maybe a way out, a way forward would be for someone to take another stab at writing down those rules in like a future-proof way that so that we can compose with future HRR extensions and such. Um, and then we can just see how it goes, and that way we'll have something more concrete to compare against. Uh, 
Uh, Martin? I sort of queued and dequeued myself. I thought I dropped to the back, but that's uh, that's okay. Um, so oh. yeah, the the um, cookie thing. I, I think we'll yeah. It seems like we can probably just put that to bed. There's a real corner case there that is different. But um, my analysis of the the situation was basically that the the rules we have, which people aren't particularly happy with, are actually correct uh, in that. Um, they work. Uh, I was looking at the draft and was like, well, maybe there's a hole in there. And there was a hole. Um, there was a there was a hole with respect to um, the starting the handshake over again, ignoring the the rules in eighty four forty six, if the key shares were wrong or something like that. Um, and, and so that's fine. Um, we can we should get rid of that. But the the rest of it was was actually correct in that. If your extension might change, then you have to provide the same in in both inner and outer, or at least. Uh, but that's not quite right. So uh, I guess that it was almost right as far as I could tell. Um, the the other thing that I think is important to note here is the degree of complexity that's involved here is actually higher than what the pull request suggests because of exactly the comment um, that the character makes here. So um, it's it's much worse even again. Okay, Stephen, sorry, I skipped you. No, I don't think you did. I think Martin just pulled a fast queuing trick. Um, the I, I just want I, in evaluating this complexity versus you know can we just accept failure cases in some cases? It might be useful if anybody has data on how often HRR really happens in the wild already. And I can imagine that could be something somebody would have. I just don't know about it myself. But if it's really, really small, that might have a be a useful input as to as to how we how we weigh up the kind of complexity versus uh, functionality here. So it's, I guess I'm appealing to people who could collect such data that if they if they would, it'd be great. I think because if it's tiny, that should be a useful input. Yeah, uh, Chris or David, both in the queue. Uh, yeah, so um, I, I'm, I'm not sure, like I, I was looking into this today, um, I'm not sure I can, I'm allowed to give a precise number, but I will say that Cloudflare does see a small number, like we do send HRR in a small number of connections, it's pretty, pretty damn small, but it's enough to as to where like I wouldn't feel comfortable bricking on a bunch of edge cases. Um, you know, because of, you know, things we don't deal with uh, because of ECH. So I mean, it's you know, it's it that that's I guess that's just one data point, and I'm I'm sorry I can't give a more concrete number at this point. I might be able to later. David, I'm unfortunately in a similar boat, but like we, it, it's rare we do see it. But I think the point is the the importance is less. Like I think the numbers are mostly an indication, like that it being that that it is rare is I think mostly an indication that like we probably got the design of this wrong. Um, I think the the question for the server is ca how, what decisions you need to make to ensure this cannot happen because it's the server that's going to need the server is the one that decides whether to deploy X. Um, and if by doing so it is promising I will not HRR then uh, it needs to be able to make that promise but whether it HRRs is a function of the client not the server and so unless we can come up with a story that guarantees that there is not going to be an HRR with like like possibly like like for instance, the hints mechanism might be a path towards that, but that doesn't quite work because we need to like account for recoveries and all the other stuff. Um, and because I think if we if we if we go down the route of like forcing servers to make this promise, we'll end up making it, and the promise can't be made. Then server operators just won't be able to deploy ECK. Uh, Ecker, I believe you're next. Yeah, so I guess I'm still, to uh, as, as I think should be apparent from my from my previous, yeah, I don't, as Martin said, I don't think the hint thing's going to work. Um, as it should be apparent from my previous sort of um, uh, uh, going back and forth, I think I think from a, from like a conceptual perspective that encrypted 
encrypting HRR is like attractive. In fact, like I, I at one point thought that encrypting SH would be attractive too. Um, I guess I'd like to understand what the what the source of the complexity is around encrypting HRR. Um, uh, and I think it, it, like the most I'm getting is like Martin this is a code path. Martin is the code path is very complicated. Um, but that's I think that having a statement of that would be clear for me. I didn't get that from Martin's email. Yeah, I mean, yeah th th this is a this is kind of path complexity problem more than anything else. It's um, the the analysis here is probably simpler in in some sense because you can say, well, we're following this path or we're following this path, and they're they're discrete separate paths. So I think that that's um, that's the, the the advantage of taking something like this. The problem that I have is that because HRR is rare. Yeah. And um, the the problems that we're talking about are, are corner cases. Even then, uh, inside that that rare case, um, we're talking about code that's not going to get tested um, by through use. Right. So that, that's that's what really bothers me at the most is that we're we're piling a bunch of complexity here. Like client hello generation and processing is fabulously complex in in ACH, and uh, I don't want to move that same complexity. To hello retry request, it's just yeah. scary. So, so, so I have, I have like a. Uh, sorry, I think someone's on the queue. P R G. I'm not sure who that is. Oh, it's plus oh, one. Sorry, my mistake. It's plus one. Okay, yeah. Um. So, um. Uh. So, so I, so I think, I, I, try, I attempted to. I sent. I pasted the wiki a link to the, like my attempt to list the issues, and m maybe I'm like dumb, which is certainly possible, or having enough coffee, which is also possible. But it seemed like we kind of agreed we didn't care about 333. And um, and that leaves 233 and 373 and 358. And like, why aren't all these addressed by just having an ECH extension in the HRR, um, in, 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 in HR? Because it seems to me that then, then, then you know, um, then you can read that extension to find out whether each is accepted, and then, um, and and then, which is two three three and three seven three, and then, um, uh, uh, and then we fix this 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 problem with um, eight four four six section four one two, um, with with the, with the interpretation misinterpretation in our opinion of the uh, of the CH restrictions, uh, and HR restrictions. So like, I'm not saying that's the right approach, but like I understand like why is that just solve all these problems. Sorry, can you just say that in one sentence, Ecker? I kind of missed. Yeah, why? Like, it seems to me that it seems to me that like that the, the two, three, three, and three, seven, three come down to not being able to detect whether HRR was in use. Um, but HRR took the inner or the outer, right? And an ECH extension, an ECH, uh, uh, some kind of ECH extension in HRR saying which one it was was all that problem. Given that we've already decided we don't care if you know whether um, we, we don't we we've already decided that nature that with HRR we don't care if you know whether ECH is in use or not. Um, and um, and then it also seems to solve this problem about changing CH inner because now you have an ECH extension and so ECH is not allowed to change. So like, again, maybe this is like totally dumb and David's gonna explain to you why I'm wrong, but like, I just wanna understand why I'm wrong. David, go ahead. Um, you're not wrong. You're basically describing the process that ended up with this design. Uh, I, 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 we went, oh, well, what if we stick an extension in there? Um, then you go. Uh, th then then the problem is split mode in its current formulation assumes that the the backend doesn't really know what's going on, and so we can't have the ECH extension appear in the transcript, which means there needs to be a like actual HRR inner versus the thing that actually gets sent. And so now we've invented HRR inner. Well, uh, at the time well, we I, hadn't. Hang on a second. I thought we'd already agreed the backend had to know what was going on because it couldn't generate the, the the random properly otherwise. That is a good point. I had not thought about that. Um, uh, yeah, maybe we could just do so. Uh, yeah, I guess to finish my thought, the 333 hadn't been dropped at the time, and so we were like, okay, well, we need a cookie. Uh, so that's clearly two of them. And then uh, from there, uh, oh, I, oh, right, though, sorry, there was another. Uh, so the other half of this is um, merely telling the client that this is the inner client hello still leaves you with. Uh, needing to know how to generate that outer dummy client hello that you know is going to be ignored, and now you don't even have a syntactically valid HRR to speak against. And I think that's where some of the complexity in the PR comes from, where we just need to like 
write down some rules to formulate like to like put, put together a nominal client hello. Um, why can't yeah, you just, you're... why can't you just replay the client hello? Probably. I mean, unless you're unless you're concerned. I guess concern is... go ahead. I guess like like. The, 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 this seems like in the same space of design as like what we currently wrote down. Like I think the thing we wrote down is probably slightly more complicated just because we tried to solve a couple of other issues. And if we want to drop some of those issues, cool. Um, I would expect that complexity wise, it's about the same. Oh, I'm um, not arguing for one or the other. I'm trying to understand the space. Okay, no, I like I think I think you have like like I, I think you have you, you you have identified another data point in this vague space. I'm check, folks. There's like five minutes left. Yeah, uh, Ben. <clears throat> On the participation of the backend server, I just wanted to say that I believe that the the the, the backend server or servers in general can generate a compatible client hello dot random unconditionally all the time. Uh, I I think it would even be reasonable to make that just like the default behavior in your in your SSL server implementation. Although that's Wait, probably what? controversial. Which value? Sorry. Um, the so okay. We have this this formula for the backend server to generate a tagged server hello random. My apologies. Um, and uh, that in general is just a safe thing that servers can always do. So they don't need to be necessarily ECH aware exactly. Maybe in the future all TLS servers will generate server hello randoms in this manner. Uh, Chris? Oh, uh, I just wanted to say, um, I, I I just wanted to suggest, like, just, I guess I, sh I could have just plus one in the chat. I just wanted to say, um, David Benjamin suggests that perhaps we can reduce the complexity of the current TR, and maybe that's a way forward. Um, so I wanted to suggest that as, as one way to resolve this issue, uh, or at least for now, like, the, the what we do next is try to reduce the complexity of the current PR. Um, so we only have two minutes left for the mic box. Um, so what I would like to propose we do at this point, um, given that this is, uh, there are enough things floating around, uh, uh, enough issues floating around, thanks Acker for pulling the list together. Um, I'd like to suggest that we form a design team specifically to iron out HRR um, and have a number of meetings between the next interim uh, where hopefully we can come back and present uh, sort of the conclusion of the design team or the recommendation of the design team with a corresponding PR and uh, finally resolve this issue. Um, if that seems uh, reasonable to folks, um, uh, you know, plus one or something on the, the chat here or like drop an email to the list or something, or, or, or maybe the chairs can send an email to the list saying that. Um, well, the, the chairs yeah, can send a message to the list. I was just gonna say the chairs can send a message to the list. We're gonna, please try to be reasonable. The last time we did a design team, we had like 15 people on it. If there's, <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, let's try to make sure we have a, a concise group so it's easier to schedule and get things done um, and trust your fellow, you know, man and woman to uh, get it right. Thanks. Um, yeah, so it, 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 to allocate enough time for the design team to work, it might make sense to uh, probably have the next interim a month from now um, so that we like uh, four meetings or so, um, so maybe a weekly cadence, and then um, that should be enough to to work through this. So I guess with that, I'll yield to the chairs. Joe, unless you have anything to add other than uh, thank you for your time and we will uh, continue to press forward. No, that's it, thanks. Thanks, thanks for taking notes, Chris. Yeah, thanks, Chris, thanks all. All right.